The Hero and the Wolf, Chapter 4 Lynx P.O.V. After Faolin wandered outside, Malin told me to make sure she's okay. I agreed and got up to go after her. I stopped after seeing her on the fence with that object from earlier in her hands. She poked and prodded, he, object, and a small grin formed on her face as she set it down. She opened her mouth and started singing. <laughs> She gazed up at the moon as the final note faded. I was stunned for a second. Her voice was quite pretty. She smiled softly, the moonlight illuminating her face and making the silver in her fur shine. I stepped forward and make a, made a stick snap. She spun around and narrowed her glowing green eyes. She came forward a bit, then widened her eyes. Link? she asked cautiously, coming closer. I smirked and moved into the moonlight. She breathed a sigh of relief and murmured, Don't do that. You scared me. I chuckled slightly and asked, "'Scared of what?' She looked away and murmured, "'Scared of Dark coming back to try and to rape me again. Trust me, it ain't fun.' Frowning, I took her in my arms, whispering in her ear, "'As long as I'm around, you have nothing to be scared of.' A scarlet blush formed on her cheeks, making her look prettier. "'How sweet!' a voice snarled from behind us. We spun around and saw Dark, his ruby eyes glowing in the darkness like Faolin's. I moved in front of Fa... Fow, drawing my sword at the same time. "'What do you want?' I asked harshly, making my darker twin laugh. "'Fowlin, right?' he asked to the figure behind me. "'Would you like to know how I kidnapped you in the first place?' Out of the corner of my eye, I saw her ears perk in interest. "'Yes, I've been wondering about that,' she stated, almost whispering. He only chuckled and moved closer, his eyes on Fow. He stopped and pulled something out of his black tunic. This, he started gesturing to the object, is something given to me by Ganondorf himself. I stiffened. Ganondorf is dead, sealed away in the sacred realm, I growled back, my hand tightening around my sword's hilt. What if, for example, he somehow escaped before he died? He cast a spell on this rune to have time-traveling powers like that dear ocarina of yours. He ordered me to go into the future and kidnap the girl with wolf blood in her. Well, obviously I found her and used the rune to come back here. He also told me to try and impregnate her. If I failed, he would do it himself, he told us mockingly. Wait, why does he want with me? Fowlin asked from behind me. Have you taken a look at yourself lately? You're a half-breed, a mutant. Any child of yours will have extraordinary powers, and Ganondorf is willing to use to this advantage, he replied, making Fowlin shake in anger. So I'm just a tool? She spat venomously, her emerald eyes glowing brighter in rage. Dark nodded. Basically, yeah. Do you really think I tried to rape you because I felt attracted to you? She growled like a wild wolf and began to step past me. Foul, I whispered, causing her to glance at me. Her eyes snapped back to my twin, and she growled. Try as you might, you will never break me! He cocked an eyebrow at the enraged girl in front of him, his eyes glowing dangerously. "'Oh, then you will die!' he snarled, his hand reaching up to draw his sword. Before he could even grasp the handle, she growled savagely. Quick as lightning, she punched him in the face and rammed her knee in his groin. He doubled over, muttering curses under his breath. "'I'll be back!' <laughs> Dark hissed before melting into the shadows. <laughs> I saw her hands clench into fist in the pale moonlight, her sharp claws digging into her tender flesh. Soon small streams of blood started to drip from the puncture wounds. Alarmed, I cautiously approached her still shaking figure and gently placed a hand on her shoulder. Her shivers of anger slowly melted away as she unclenched her fists. I was just a bloody tool, she whispered, looking across Hyrule Field and towards the castle. Cautiously, I wrapped my arm around her shoulders, squeezing tightly to comfort her. "'Don't listen to Dark. You are not a tool,' I murmured firmly. Slowly, she wrapped her arms around my middle and hugged me tightly, careful not to get any blood on my tunic. "'Thank you. I needed to hear that,' she whispered. Before I could say anything else, she pulled away and rushed toward Malin's house. I trudged back to Malin's house after her and into the room Malin lended me. 
As I passed Violin's room, I heard soft singing coming from inside. Ignoring her voice, I entered my room and got ready for bed. I kicked my boots and my gloves off and placed my hat somewhere safe. Unbuckling my belt, I pulled my tunic off, leaving me in my leggings. I crawled on the bed and opened the window to let the cool air in. Staring up at the moon, I couldn't help but think how about the confused girl down the hall from me. I heard a faint creaking come from outside the window. Leaning forward, I saw Fowlin gazing at the moon through her open window. She rested her head against the side railing as she listened to the sounds of nighttime. A gentle breeze blew past us, making her wolf-like ears perk in interest. Her ears relaxed after a moment. She shook her head and muttered something about being too paranoid. She pulled herself inside and closed the window. I shrugged and mimicked her actions, settling down into my soft bed. Son, he said.